Hi! Happy Wellness Wednesday! I feel like it's been forever since I have been live on Instagram, but it's really fun to be back. Um, like I'm going to be talking about today, I've been traveling a bit. I wanted to just share a little bit about my experience with travel with you guys and also share some of my tips for overcoming jet lag. Um, but as you're joining, say hey, let me know where you're from. Um, and I would love to hear about your experiences with travel. Do you want to travel? Do you travel a lot? Um, what are your tips for traveling like in a healthy way as far as staying on top of your energy and getting over jet lag? Um, I just got back from a two week trip to Greece, um, which was amazing. I went with my sister. We traveled together for the first time and it went really well. Um, I was a little nervous about that, but <laughs> it, was, it went great. Um, hey Kevin, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Um, travel, I feel, is so important to me and for the last couple of years as I've been going through school and I have been working on building my business, I haven't really created the space to get out and explore as much and um, I feel like the last two trips I've taken, so I went to Tulum, I did a lot of traveling like in a very tight period of time and was trying to write a cookbook at the same time, um, but I went to Tulum, I went to Mexico, came back a couple weeks later, I left for Greece, I was in Greece for two weeks. Um, and it was just such an amazing reminder for me, and I don't know about you guys, Kevin's going to Arizona, where you're based in New Jersey, are you doing a road trip? Oh, that's awesome. Road trips are so cool. Um, I flew, <laughs> I did not drive to Mexico, I did not drive to Greece. Um, but traveling in general, I think it's so important for me to get out of my routine. Um, and I don't know if you guys feel that same way, but I feel like when I'm in my routine for a long time, I kind of forget that I'm just kind of doing the same thing over and over again and I start to feel kind of antsy and like grumpy and um, so it's really important for me to just like get out and explore and remember that like I don't have to do things the same way every time even if that's the most efficient way to do it when I'm at home. Um, I'm drinking my kombucha right now. I don't know if you guys saw my story yesterday about going grocery shopping and how awesome it was <laughs> to go grocery shopping just for myself and not have to buy recipes to or ingredients to recipe test with but I'm loving kombucha. Um, so yeah, travel really important for me, um, switching things up, it really stimulates creativity, it helps me feel a deep sense of relaxation, and also I think getting out of my routine forces me to get more in touch with my natural rhythms, which I think ties a little bit into what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, which is my experience with jet lag. Um, so. I am feeling pretty good today and I actually think that I wasn't as affected this time as I was a few years ago when I traveled. Um, the last time I traveled, I really hadn't taken a vacation in like two years. So two years ago, I went to Europe and spent some time with my cousin and it was a great trip, but I never felt like I quite got on schedule there. I felt exhausted pretty much the whole time. I was there for two weeks, kind of similar to my Greece trip. And I felt like maybe in the last three or four days, of my trip two years ago, I started to feel like I could function. Um, so I was trying to be a lot more mindful during my Greek trip about how I could support myself to just feel good. Um, and so I came up with three tips and three things that I use that worked really well. I think um, everybody probably has a different strategy. Um, so two of mine are lifestyle hacks and one is a supplement that I wanna tell you guys about that I actually never take when I'm at home. I only take it when I'm traveling. Um, but again, I think part of how travel can be so inspiring is if you give yourself a break and, and time to rest and time to kind of adjust to your natural body's kind of rhythm, um, that I think is what can create a lot of space and help you feel that relaxation that we all want when we're on vacation. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about my trip at the end of the video, but I do want to jump in and give you guys these three tips that I have for helping to combat, or we'll say, I don't like the idea of like fighting things. So we'll like how to overcome or change your relationship to jet lag and not experience it as much. Um, so tip number one is something I tell you guys pretty much anytime we're talking about anything health related, and that is to hydrate stay hydrated. I think that, you know, not only as far as getting out of routine, um, when we're traveling, we are not as aware of drinking water as we might be when we're at home because there's so much going on, especially if you're traveling by plane. I know for me, it always throws me off when I have to empty my water bottle and I'm like, wait, I'm not used to, 
I'm used to having a full water bottle. I'm not used to even for a period of time having an empty water bottle. I usually use this as a measure of how much water I've taken in during the day. And if I don't have this with me, um, or if it's empty, then I feel like I get off track without even thinking about it um, with how much water I am taking in. And dehydration, even, um, what is it, like even a 10% reduction in the amount of water you take in can lead to a 30% reduction in your functionality. Um, and so especially when you're challenging your body already, putting it in a new environment, putting it in a new time zone, you want to stay on top of the basic things like drinking enough water, which I'm going to do right now. Because <laughs> that was one thing that I think I could have probably done a better job of when I was in Greece was staying on top of drinking water. Um, but I do know as much as I paid attention to it, it definitely was helpful. So remember, not only does dehydration reduce um, the functionality of your body, it also makes you feel really sluggish and tired. You're not able to clear the toxins as much. And again, if you're flying places, you're trapped in this contained environment, you want to be able to flush as much of that out as you get off the plane as you possibly can. Um, so staying on top of staying hydrated is one of the number one things that I think you can do to regulate your energy. And again, just make things easier on your body because you're already challenging yourself by being in a new environment and it's a stressor. So we want to do everything we can to mitigate the stress. Um, breathing techniques and meditation can also be really helpful helpful, but that's everybody's personal practice. So the one thing that I will recommend first is drink plenty of water. The second thing that I found to be really helpful for myself personally and as I was out checking out other people's blogs, it's really great to see everybody joining by the way, I love seeing you guys, hi! <laughs> um, I was checking out other people's blogs and honestly reading articles, you know, on uh, different medical websites talking about uh, uh, jet lag. <laughs> And uh, people were saying, some people use intermittent fasting. I don't personally ascribe to intermittent fasting, but I did find that eating a little bit less, eating lighter during the phase of travel and transit. So again, like I flew to Greece, we were flying for 13 hours. I tried to snack lightly on things that I felt um, were kind of refreshing to my body. So some of what was served on the plane were like cucumbers. They had apples available for us to snack on and they would serve meals and I wouldn't quite eat all of it. I would just eat, you know, a little bit of protein and maybe some vegetables. Um, but again, I think it comes back to the idea that when you are traveling, you're stressing your body out. You're putting yourself in this state of being in a new environment, having to adapt to things. So again, you kind of want to reduce the load on your body, not on, um, not to mention that eating and stimulating your uh, metabolism requires energy. So again, if we're trying to ease our body into a new time zone and into a new circadian rhythm, essentially, uh, reducing the strain on the other body systems will make it a little bit easier for, easier for you to adapt to the new circadian rhythm that you're trying to adapt to when you get wherever you're going. Um, so staying hydrated, eating light when you're in transit can be really nice. And also another thing about eating light, hey, so good to see you. Um, another thing about eating light is that when we're traveling, we're usually really sedentary and that slows down our digestive process to begin with. Um, so again, eating light and making it easier on your digestive system. If you're, if you're not having the same kind of function in your gut, things aren't moving, things aren't churning the way they normally would be if we were moving around. Um, you know, even if you sit at a desk job, you get up and go to the bathroom, you get up and, you know, go to lunch, you get up and you walk around more than you would when you're either on a road trip. So that even applies to road trips. Um, but especially when you're on a plane, you're not moving as much. So everything kind of slows down. So just lighten the load by sticking mostly to liquids, primarily water. Um, alcohol doesn't count. <laughs> um, but also lightening the load by not eating quite as much when you're in transit and then let yourself find your appetite again when you get to wherever you're going. So the third tip I wanted to talk to you about that again, it's been uh, cross-referenced. It, it was a hunch that I had. So I started using it um, and it's the one supplement that I actually never use when I'm at home, but I realized how valuable it can be when you're traveling is melatonin. So this is actually a complex that I got when I was in Greece. So it's not a particular brand that I recommend, but I don't normally use melatonin at home because I get like a melatonin hangover. Does anybody else experience anything like that? Do you try to use melatonin when you're sleeping or to sleep at night and then you wake up feeling kind of just groggy? Um, Cause I know I definitely do, which is why I stopped using it on a regular basis, but melatonin is a hormone and it's a hormone that your body naturally produces in response to the light changes that indicate that it's time for our body to go to sleep. So I started thinking about this on a bigger level when I got to Greece and I was like, oh my gosh, like my body is so out of whack. You know, it's like three o'clock in the morning here and 12 o'clock in the afternoon there. And like, where am I? 
um, I started realizing what a big shift it is for us to put ourselves in such a different environment and a different time zone and we really are affecting our body chemistry because we're animals and as much as we might not realize it, we are animals that are connected to the environment around us. Um, so again, if we can just gently support, like I don't take sleeping pills, I don't you know, recommend sleeping pills unless you really, really, you know, whatever, it's your choice. I don't personally recommend or take sleeping pills, but I do find that melatonin was strong enough, again, to start to shift the circadian rhythm because you're um, gently supporting your hormones to adapt to the new environment you're in. Um, so also, when you are using melatonin, be aware that the dosage can vary. I know, again, I'm pretty sensitive, so one tablet of this uh, particular supplement, I think has, uh, where does it say? 1.5 milligrams of melatonin. I found that I could take half of this tablet, half of one tablet, and that was plenty for me. So that's like less than one milligram of melatonin. Um, better to take a little bit less than too much, but I only took this for about two days when I got there, again, to just try to gently um, acclimate my body chemistry to the environment that I was in. Um, and it worked like a charm. You know, the first night I got there, I did sleep 12 hours the first two days <laughs> because also the travel was so exhausting. Um, but having the melatonin, I think, really helped me get onto the normal sleep schedule. And the key is you want to take it around 30 minutes before your normal bedtime would be. So for example, if you're trying to get into a routine wherever you're traveling, if you're trying to get in the routine of going to bed at 10 or 10.30, you want to take the melatonin about 30 minutes before for that. So you want to take the melatonin at 9.30 or 10, and that's when it really helps ease you into that nice, normal um, circadian rhythm sleep cycle. So again, um, it was funny because I had this hunch about it, and then later on I was listening to a podcast with a sleep expert, and he was talking about how melatonin is actually one of the best things you can do for jet lag. So I was like, yes, I got it. Um, so that felt really good, but he was also saying that it's not really good uh, to take long term. It's not as effective as we think it might be unless you believe it's effective and then the placebo effect takes over. Um, but I, again, melatonin is a hormone. We don't wanna mess with our hormones too much. So I recommend taking melatonin only occasionally when you need to. There are definitely other ways we can support healthy sleep and we can talk more about that in the future. But specifically for jet lag, melatonin, again, small doses, like half a milligram to one and a half milligrams, plenty for me, but you will have to test to find your own upper limits for the supplement. Um, but again, it made such a huge difference. And uh, I thought, again, it's so super simple. At the end of the day, you know, traveling is a stressor and a challenge to our bodies. So there are only so many things we can do naturally to feel good um, and support ourselves in that transition. And then you have to just be gentle with yourself. And again, like I said, it took me about two days to adjust. So for those two days, I just let myself sleep when I needed to sleep, I just tried to make sure that I went to bed at a normal hour, so between 10 and 11 for the first two nights, to start to help get my body into that rhythm. And then I felt pretty freaking good afterwards. I felt like um, I didn't feel groggy the whole time. And um, you know, I was exhausted from all the fun stuff we were doing. So again, we were in Greece, we were at the beach all the time, we were on boats, we went jet skiing. You can check out my um, Instagram stories highlight if you wanna see some of the fun stuff we did. It was such a great adventure, I really loved it. Um, and again, I just really want to encourage and support you to do something that gets you out of your normal environment. I understand that travel is a luxury for a lot of people and it might not be something that fits into your life right now, but even if you just go, you know, drive for an hour outside your hometown and like, is it a field? Is it a forest? Is it, where, where are you that is different from where you normally are in your everyday environment? Sometimes just switching things up in a small way can bring you that kind of inspiration that comes from getting out of your routine and getting off your normal path. Take a new route to work, you know? <laughs> um, take a few minutes to breathe in an environment that's different. I think it's so supportive um, to just who we are, again, as creatures. I think we like to play and be free and have fun. Um, and for me, travel just really, it really brings that in. <laughs> so my three tips for overcoming jet lag, remember we really wanna stay hydrated, make sure we're flushing all the toxins out and keeping all the systems functioning optimally. Eat a little bit lighter while you're in transit. You don't have to fast completely, but just give your system a break because not only are we already challenging our body by traveling, but also you're sedentary. You're not moving as much as you would, so all the systems start to shut down. And then when you get to wherever you're going, depending on how many time zones you switch, if you've changed your circadian rhythm, um, try supplementing with melatonin for the first couple of nights just to get your hormones 
into the new rhythm of wherever it is you are visiting. So that's it. I mean, I would love to answer any questions you guys have about other travel tips. Again, we can talk more about sleep and sleep related supplements at another time, um, but still ask those questions if you have them and that'll give me an idea of what you wanna learn more about in the future. Um, I'm really happy to be back. You know, I love traveling and it's so nice to have a home to come back to. Um, I was traveling for a while. I think I was on the road for like a year and a half several years ago and didn't have a home base and that was a little intense after a while <laughs> um but yeah it's nice to be back in la and um i definitely feel inspired again like i've been encouraging you guys to do if you don't have the time or the resources to get to greece um you know get outside of your town just even for like a couple hours or for an afternoon break up your pattern and get those creative juices flowing um i've definitely been inspired to take my own advice on that note it's something i've been saying i'm going to do for a long time which i live in la and there are so many great places to go on day trips around so i'm actually going to start that this weekend <laughs> which I'm really excited about because um, it is something I've had an intention to do, just get out on little journeys and explore here and there. And I think that'll help me feel a lot, um, just more inspired and kind of relaxed in my home routine. So that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Please, again, let me know if there are any other questions you have about tips for traveling or um, adjusting to travel, even sleep related questions. Again, we'll have a conversation about that later, but let me know what you want to know. And um, I'll be hanging out and doing my thing. So have a beautiful rest of your day. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good to be home. <laughs> Bye.